is our guest tonight as we talk about Native American Heritage Month, which we honor in November. Albert, thank you for being with us. We're going to get right back to the phone lines. Wilma is on the line. Good evening, Wilma. Hey, y'all. I've got a couple of comments here and a question. Um, uh, I want to respond to your, your last caller, I think it was. I'm white, and uh, my school was blown up by dynamite. And on the first day of school, that was explained to me by another student what that was all about. And that probably distressed and concerned me more in my lifetime than going to that same school and being taught about Native Americans in the Nashville area, being taught about the Trail of Tears and all these things that had happened. And I was in an elementary school and this was over 50 years ago. So uh, I think that's all relevant on how you internalize that. But, uh, you know, I just, uh, uh, Mr. Bender, I wanted to ask you a question. The East Bank over there uh, with this new development in that village, What's going on with going through that in an archaeological sense, and where is that at right now? Are we just going to rush that up like we did with the Sound Stadium? But I'll take your comments off the air there. Thank you. Thank you. We talk about the East Bank development. Have, have there been many conversations about what may be unearthed during that? Well, I am so glad that that question was asked because that brings up something that I wanted to address and bring up anyway. Uh, we have had, oh, over the past several months, uh, the Native American community and its allies, we've had uh, demonstrations dealing with the issue of the East Bank and the <clears throat> Oracle mm -hmm. uh, entity or corporation that wants to transform the East Bank into a whole new Nashville neighborhood. Now, the latest information that I've received <clears throat> from the um, Tennessee Department of Archaeology, who has been in contact with Oracle, and Oracle, let me back up just a bit, Oracle has hired an archaeological firm a reputable archaeological firm which has been overseeing what our Oracle has been doing on the East Bank and at this point in time no uh, archaeological um, remains or uh, there hasn't been any artifacts discovered and the depth of the uh, excavation has gone down to what is called bedrock. And there's nothing below bedrock of um, any type of, uh, in other words, nothing can be found mm -hmm. below the bedrock level. Now, that is good news for us in the Native American community, which means that nothing is being disturbed. But what the problem that we've had with Oracle is that Oracle has refused to respond to any of our entreaties to open communications with them. And that's something that we are very disturbed about and something that we are working on trying to establish communications with Oracle. Oracle has communicated with the Department of Archaeology and the Ar Department of Archaeology acting in kind of a middleman mm -hmm. type of uh, status has tried to open communications between Oracle and the Native American community, but so far Oracle has completely rebuffed any attempts that we have made to communicate with them. And that's where things are standing right now. What would you like to talk about? Well, we would like to communicate with Oracle the uh, ability to uh, be kept informed as to what, if anything, that they are, will find in the future. And we can't uh, garner or get that type of information 
if Oracle won't communicate with us. And so far, since they have found nothing, that is good news, and we would like to uh, have an amicable relationship with Oracle in that regard. But so far, again, Oracle has, um, I would say, been very adamant in not communicating with us at all. You know, we have uh, used our best efforts, and we're going to have to um, ramp up our efforts, so to speak, and with uh, more demonstrations or more, should we say, for want of a better word, um, hardline um, communication or hard uh, ways mm -hmm. to deal with Oracle rather than being um, nice about it, right. so to speak. I understand what you're saying. Obviously, that's a current issue you are facing, but as a, as a community, what are some other issues that are really standing in your way of thriving right now? Well, um, I would guess uh, on a local level, um, we have like um, economic issues, mm -hmm. um, jobs, housing, medical care, the type of issues that face any community of people in our particular political, uh, social, and economic situation. And uh, that's what we're facing at the present time. What about across the nation as a whole? Well, I think across the nation as a whole, it's one of um, economics because unemployment has historically been rampant on Native American reservations. In fact, for most reservations, the unemployment level is somewhere at 80 to 85 percent. Wow. That's astounding. Yeah, it's astounding, and it is a survival issue. Mm -hmm. It is an issue that gets to the very point, again, of a type of, uh, for want of a better word, still genocide. And that is one of the issues that has been historically facing Native American people and that we are still facing. You spent many years out in the West, but you came back to Nashville. Why did you do that? And, and what's the difference between living out West as an indigenous person and then coming here? Well, one is first off one of population because in the uh, western areas of the country you have a comparatively large Native American populations. I mean, you can go out on the streets, you see Native American people, you go to the movie, store, movie theaters, you see Native Americans, you buy popcorn at, inside uh, mm -hmm. the theater, uh, there's a Native American behind the uh, counter. And, and again, it's one of, um, of population. But I would think that what we are looking at again is a situation of economics and um, how we are going to thrive going into the um, next several decades of bettering our communities. And you moved back here to really push that forward here, right? Well, I moved back here because this is part of the ancient Cherokee homeland. And myself and other people from uh, who are who were transplanted to Oklahoma by the Trail of Tears mm -hmm people from other southern tribes, when they moved back here, they said to me, uh, Albert, we moved back here because we moved back to the homeland. And so that is one thing that in particular has stood out to me and stands out to me in terms of continuing to live here in the Nashville, Tennessee area because I am continuing the uh, cycle of existence that has existed by virtue of Native American people being having been living here, having lived here for the past 14,000 plus years. Wow. 
Wow. Uh, but we'll probably only have about three more minutes, two and a half, really. Um, we were talking earlier in the commercial break about the powwows that happen, and it's a great chance for education. It's a great chance for community. Tell me a little bit about what happens at those. There was one not too long ago out at Long Hunter State Park. You yeah, well, the uh, powwows are um, a social gathering for Native Americans to get together for um, other Native Americans. Powwows are uh, sacred gatherings for people to come together and share traditions, life ways, and outlooks on life. And it's good just to rub shoulders with mm -hmm. other Native Americans and to walk around an area where you can see um, other Native, other indigenous people. And it's a very fulfilling uh, feeling. I bet, to be able to look around and see yourself reflected in others' eyes, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, living in the South and living in, living east of the Mississippi is, for a large, is to a large extent for indigenous peoples a lonely outpost. Mm -hmm. But we are manning these lonely outposts because I'll say this, uh, 200 years from now, Things could, have look, could, things could look a lot different than the way they are now. Because 200 years prior to this, 300 years prior to our sitting here talking and uh, communicating, we would have never thought that this situation would have, could have existed. That's very true. Thank you for spending the past hour with us. It's been very enlightening. We appreciate it. It's been my pleasure also. Thank you. All right, when we come back, I'll tell you what we have on tap for the rest of the week. Stay with us.